What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I have got a really interesting lens to show you today. It's the Voigtlander Epilanthar 110mm f2.5 macro lens. It's a fully manual lens, but it does have the electronics in it so that it still reports all the EXIF data. I've always been a bit fascinated with manual focus lenses. There's something about them that's just more satisfying from like a tactile standpoint than with a normal autofocus lens. I've always found that autofocus lenses just don't quite have the same fit and finish and feel that manual focus lenses do. I think in some ways it's similar to like a fountain pen or a mechanical keyboard or a nice watch or tool or something, right? Something, something where the build quality and the finish is part of the experience and not just Part of the construction. This lens is an absolute beast. It feels like the camera equivalent of a polished brick, um, but in all of the best ways. Technically, it's barely heavier than its Sigma competitor um, and about four tenths of a pound heavier than the Sony alternative. But I think what's special about this lens is just how dense it is. So most, most of the other lenses are, you know, another 40 or 50 percent longer than this one is. Um, this lens makes up for that during focusing, but when it's all the way compacted down, it is extremely dense and hefty in a very good way. So the aperture ring on this lens is clicked and fully manual, obviously. Um, the detents on the clicks are just smooth enough and just firm enough. It's kind of right there at that Goldilocks zone. My only complaint with the aperture ring is that it's right here near the base of the lens, which means it kind of is in a weird spot to get to. Your hand doesn't naturally want to sit there. So now we get to the focus ring on this thing. I don't know if it's really fair to call it a focus ring per se. It's more like the whole damn barrel of the lens focuses. It turns a little over a full rotation. I think it's like one and a quarter rotations but that feels like a metric mile when you're using it. That's okay though, because if you're, if you're doing any kind of say portraiture style work or like where you're doing anything at a further distance, that's taken up by, you know, the first quarter turn of the throw of the lens. So that's very easy to dial in by hand. And then if you're going to do the more macro focus side of this lens, which is obviously what it's designed for, you have plenty of range to dial in exactly where you want your focus to be. The downside of all that precision control of your focus though is this is not a good like run and gun lens. With some practice, you could probably get pretty good at doing your focus pulls with it, but it would take a little bit of use to get used to. I really do like the feel of the focus ring on this lens. It reminds me a lot of one of my old Minolta manual focus lenses. The focus ring is really nicely damped. It's just the right amount of friction. It turns very smoothly, but it doesn't move on its own. Everything about this lens was just completely nailed as far as the feel of it goes. Optically, this lens is fantastic. It seems very crisp, very sharp. I'm not really an expert in the pixel peeping category and comparing, you know, minutia of chromatic aberration and whatnot, but I have no complaints with it so far. Overall, I've really enjoyed my time with this lens. I do think that if I purchase a macro lens sometime in the future, I'll probably not pick this one up first. I think that some of the autofocus macros are just a better all-around pick for a macro lens. But if you've got the money burning a hole in your pocket and you really love the manual experience, definitely consider this lens. It is an absolute joy to use. Let me know in the comments if you would choose this macro lens for your uses or if you'd go with one of the other competing options, say from Sony or Sigma. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will see you next time.